how many people are not, they just come to the interview unprepared or they just give it a go and see how, how it goes uh, and they fail it. It's much easier to, in, in, my, in my company, it's much easier to land a permanent uh, job than the internship. It sounds absurd, I know, but it's all about competition. Yep. Yeah, and, and I guess that is a learning point from there so that sometimes if you don't get accepted in that position, it doesn't mean that you're not good enough or you didn't do what well you did. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I agree yeah. with that because it's, it's all about the fit. If you're being a good fit for the role, not only the company, but the specific role that the company is asking for. For example, if you are asking for a database developer and you're a really brilliant Python developer and you come there and you kind of know databases, then the role is not just for you. There is not a good fit there. Or mm. if you're kind of like arrogant and su you're super good, but you're arrogant and you um, really want to take pride on things that you do and stuff, then one team might like you for that. Another team might not like you and you might not be cooperating, fitting well with the team. So it's all about the right fit. Um, yeah. Right. I can see Greg smiling. And I, I hope this is because he has a question. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to actually, we live in a world where innovation and entrepreneurship are possible. So do you guys, as problem solvers, work in your free time in any projects? Or you mentioned earlier that there are lots of opportunities they got in freelancing from Fiverr and any other websites. So do you allocate any, any of your free time on making any extra money on the side or how do you leverage on these skill set that you have in terms of technology? Uh, I can answer to that. I know many people who do exactly what you're saying, that trying to start their own startup as a side job or take extra jobs or they have their hobbies that are around software development. I'm not one of those kind of people because I love what I do, but once, once it gets six, I need to shut down and change my environment. I just switch. I need to switch to recharge my batteries and start start the next day. Uh, it comes down to each individual, I guess. Some people love to work 12, 14 hours, 16 hours. I'm not one of those people, but yeah, some others might be. I think Andreas mentioned that he was doing a project on his own. I don't know if you want to talk more about that. Yeah, I mean, as I said before, learning, you know, in, in the bank, you can learn their, their stocks and you can learn their, their ways, you can learn their technologies and sometimes they're old fashioned or whatever. So yeah, I started working uh, on a project with a friend um, last year and whenever I have free time I'm just on it and um, yeah I, I I really like the idea of entrepreneurship and um, businesses that's why I'm pursuing that not because of uh, you know something else and because of learning as well um, um, so yeah one of my free time I'm working on something else on the side um, uh, is there a chance that you can share more details with us about that project? Or um, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Why not? Um, the project is um, we're trying to build is uh, it's a peer-to-peer -peer network where um, for web services. I don't know if you know Amazon Web Services, AWS. Um, they provide computing power. I know they are our client. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, nice. So yeah, they, they're providing computing power to the, to the people who need it. So for example, there are lots of, especially now with uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence, where it's very computing power uh, intensive uh, um, algorithms, uh, they, need to, they need some more supercomputers to run their software. So what we're doing is like, we're going to create like a, a peer-to-peer -peer network where everybody can throw their machines in the network. For example, your laptop, your uh, mobile device, or even a data center, and creating like a huge 
mesh of uh, uh, computing resources and people who are interested to rent those resources, they're gonna go and um, they're gonna come into our network and we're gonna give them the amount of resources they need from people and people are gonna get paid. People who provide their machines are gonna get paid for that. Like Airbnb, you have an extra space, you rent it, you get money. You have an extra laptop or your own laptop. When you're working a job, you're not using it, you put it in the network, you get paid if someone else is running stuff on it. That sounds very interesting. And it, it's leveraging on this sharing. Technology, yeah, sharing economy. Sharing economy. Sharing economy. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think I saw another question in the group, and that's about the different types of engineers. So software, mm -hmm. backend, front end, ML. Oh, yeah. There is lots of roles that you can go for. It's there is um, security. You can go to the security part. Um, uh, security, data analytics, big data, machine learning, uh, predicting algorithms, uh, engineer or quantitative analyst, engineer, which is more maths related and stuff. Front end, back end, database developer, uh, full stack developer, or which is full stack is. Uh, both front and back and everything. Um, you can go for a web developer or an application, Windows application developer, which is mainly C sharp. You can be like a Python developer. You can be a Java developer. There are lots of titles. You, there you can be any, okay. Uh, so there's not um, is, um, a certain hierarchy similar to banking. For example, there's an analyst and there's an associate and, there is, and then as you move up the ranks, you're something else. No, there are many kinds of jobs that you can do with uh, with uh, with computer science degree. Um, I don't know, George, if you agree, if you want to add any more <laughs> types of roles. Um, mm, I understand. Uh, I understand. I agree with you in what you said. Um, if I understand the question correctly, uh, no, it's not. There's no one's associate partner or whatever they are called. I'm not. I'm not really familiar with the terms. Uh, each each path is a different career path, and they don't interleave with each other. But if you want to really move forward, you can start at whatever whatever makes you feel happy, like a Java developer, and then you can become a team lead. And then at some point, if you really want to climb the hierarchy, you have to leave software development behind, actual development, then you become the system designer or the architect. And from there, you can keep moving forward and become a CTO. Yeah. But at some point, you, these are starting points. This is how you get into the industry. And then some people like to stay in those roles forever. And most companies these days have clear career paths for these people. If you're very, very intelligent and you're very good at solving problems and you don't really want to be a CTO, but you want to progress in your career, most companies will provide you with a career path that will allow you to keep uh, doing what you love. But yeah, it's, it's not the same as law firms where you start at the specific grade and then the title changes. Yeah. It's, it's more flexible. Yeah. You know, what I wanted to point out is there are many, many, many kinds of roles in, in, in this technology thing. Um, blockchain developer, but there is a role for, you know, as, as George said, a system, system design or performance. There are some, some people who love doing programs really fast and they find small, small niche a part where they, they can improve the program and in, make it faster. So there are lots of kinds of roles that you can pursue in, in computer science. System design has a bird's eye view of the system and he knows, okay, this request coming in, it's going to forward this to that other server, then this server we're going to need few servers for load balancing uh, the requests and everything so there are lots of kinds of roles that you can pursue uh, for nice and if there are so many roles how does one choose then uh, i mean you just learning and see what you learn what you like first learn what you like you just go into a field you see for example learn blockchain okay do i like this do i enjoy it 
Okay, I learn, you learn, start learning databases. And do you enjoy databases, working for databases? Do you enjoy doing machine learning algorithms? Do you just, so you're just going into various fields, you're learning about them, and then start doing some projects. And if you enjoy them, then you go, you go for it. And it, it, that makes absolute sense to me. But do you agree, George? Is this the way? test yeah it's a combination of luck really opportunities and what you really like because you're going to get your first job in something that you think you like and you might like it at the time but then you might be introduced exposed to new technology in new fields that you haven't been before and that's been the case for one of my friends at work he's a front end developer he started five six years ago as a backend developer and then at, at, there was a requirement that uh, was about front-end development at his old works, uh, workplace and no one knew how to do it. So he had to learn. He did it and he liked it. So he changed his career path four years ago and now he's a senior front-end developer and he loves what he's, what he's doing. So yeah, he didn't know back then when he was at the uni. So that's what I'm saying. It's a combination of luck, opportunities and what you really like. So in your yeah, yeah, yeah. In your career, you'll get, like, counter all those opportunities. If you really like something, you will go for it. And if you're given the chance, you will uh, dive into it. And thank you. That was really helpful. And is, is it easy to change from one thing to another? It, if it wasn't, well, I'll be honest, it's not easy as in... That's, that's a lot of experience you don't have and you need to gain it. But once you make that step, it's optional. It's up to you. It's not mandatory. It's not someone enforcing you. So it means you love it. It means you enjoy it. So easy, it's a very relative term. It's, it's what makes you happy. And to make the change, it means the change makes you happy. So yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's never easy. You need experience and experience accumulated over, over a period of years. But it's nice. And it's, if it makes you happy, then go for it. Yeah. I certainly found the same, the same thing with law. And I know this has nothing to do with the seminar, but it, it was it's pretty much the same principle. You enter into an industry, there are so many options. So it is a combination of luck where you start and then you start testing stuff. And then eventually, as Andrea said, you, you just check in if you like something. And then if you think you like it, then you go for it. And then you can use then those transferable skills if 